evening. Thank you for being here tonight. This is a night for you and for me. Pastor Judith was going to be here, but she may have been exposed to someone who had COVID. So out of an abundance of caution, she's staying home for the next few days until all the tests work their way through. And uh, I know her heart breaks not to be here with you, but I was gonna be here no matter what, because I wanted to be part of this service. It's a service that has a, du a dual mission. One, it's to honor you for whatever reason you may have grief or sorrow or whatever emotion you're feeling in your heart during this Christmas season, it respects your right to feel. This is a season of hope and joy and peace and love, but it's also a season where sorrow can feel even more um, overwhelming or certainly touching your heart. The other reason, besides respect for your individual life, is to signal you're not alone. There are more. Now, this won't be the most popular service we ever have because it touches people in different ways, but I'm really glad that you're here. We're going to retain our masks as we're going to be singing and praying together through this. So for this half-hour service or so, I just ask for God's blessings for you and for me. It's a time of hope. It's a time of healing and an opportunity for us to comfort one another in God's presence. Here are these words of light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and God, the Word was God. All things were made by God, and without God, nothing came to be. What came to be through God was life, and this life was the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Looking ahead to when we leave, look to the southwest and see the Christmas star. You've probably read about that. Thankfully, I was redirected to look for the light. Let us sing together our first Christmas carol. It came upon the midnight clear. <laughs> This Advent season, this longest night of the year, for ourselves and our families who live with the painful memories of loss, we ask for strength for today, courage for tomorrow, and peace for the past. We ask these things in the name of Christ, who shares our life in the joy and in the sorrow, death and new birth, despair and promise. Amen. Let us listen to a reading from Scripture.
reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term and that her penalty is paid that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and strengthens the powerless. Yet even youths will faint and will be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dr. James and I will now read responsibly Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. <clears throat> he will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Amen. In our gospel reading for this blue Christmas service is from the first chapter of Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way when his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be to you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on this precious, precious night. The first time I heard the phrase, Blue Christmas, I was confused. Like, what's a Blue Christmas? It sounds kind of like a jazz album or something. And it took a little bit more maturity and a little bit more of life experiences to realize that it's a way to honor you and others who are experiencing grief in the midst of life. Sometimes Christianity is viewed as an optimistic religion, and there is great joy with being a Christian, but we work so hard to express the theology found in the life of Jesus Christ, that God is with us even in the midst of our challenges. Some of the readings of the Old Testament can be shown to see when there is trouble in life that God has left or turned his face or a variety of other ways to say of displeasure, but our New Testament understanding with Jesus' life is that God is in the midst of despair. God is in the midst of these difficulties. And we as, as people struggle, footprints in the sand, that beautiful poem that tries to describe when you only see one pair of footprints is 
It's the Lord carrying you and I. That's a way to interpret this. And for your own life, we join with the people of the words of Second Isaiah here. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Comfort is a phrase that takes time. Comfort as a hug is a rare commodity these days. I had an experience where, have you seen people do air hugs with one another now? And I kind of went like, like this to a person and that person looked at me and they kind of went like this. <laughs> kind of funny. Do you miss touch? Perhaps it's the touch of a loved one. Certainly the touch of our families, the touch of our community. I was coming to the service no matter what. Uh, my dear mother passed away in March and a combination of being ill and the pandemic concerns, I wasn't able to be part of her uh, funeral service. And so I participated by uh, Zoom. And I'm thankful for my sister, for four people that were in attendance, my sister, her husband, the preacher, I guess five, my mom, and then the undertaker. But that hurts to not be part of something as important as that. As your life has been challenged this year, or the precious memories of years gone by, I just ask for that word comfort. These words, the words of scripture, the words of your friends, and your own self-comfort of the words that you use to allow yourself freedom to grieve in your pace, in your way, not the way of this world, the three days is enough, but no, the way of your heart. Comfort is the key word. And where do we look for our help? The Psalm speaks of looking to the hills, looking up. Sometimes we don't have enough strength to look up. We just need to be able to know that as we look down that the Lord is still with us. The promises that God has made during this Advent season are true. He will come again, hope. Christ at the center of our life brings a peace that passes our understanding, true. That we can recall periods of joy and we can ask for God to restore them, rejoicing. And we know that love, that the love of God with us and for us and our love for others. And yes, that self-respect and self-love is Advent dreams, but it is this night that we allow, knowing we're in between the Advent uh, thoughts and the birth of Jesus in a few days. And for we who are more mature in our faith, not just the birth of Jesus, but also Christ returning, allows us to remember God is a God of promise. Jesus came to save us, to heal us. God is with us. As we take a few minutes or a few seconds just to reflect upon that, that God is with us, that is one of the most important messages to proclaim. As our hearts are broken, God is with us. As our hearts bounce from joy to grief to other feelings, God is with us. God fulfills and makes all promises anew. I wanted to end with this encouragement for you. I had a, my father passed two years ago, a year and a half ago, my mom this year. I had a dream where my dad was, I saw him across the room and I was totally confused because I knew my dad had passed away but I went over to him and I, I said, what is going on here? I don't understand. And He couldn't speak to me but he recognized me but he couldn't speak and that was my dream. What a strange little dream. Does God use dreams to touch your heart? I pray that you pay attention to your dreams because for me that just described exactly where I'm at. My dad's gone, but he's not gone. But I can't talk to him. 
like I used to. But I have the hope that Christ brings that our conversations will return at one day. The dream that Joseph had was the most amazing dream. His wife, who's not yet his wife, is pregnant. And it was God's doing. This was a dream that was deep. And so for this Blue Christmas, I just ask you to pay attention to the gift that God gives in your dreams. They're all throughout the scriptures. As a show of hand, does God touch you in your dreams? Does anyone else? It's a gift that is scriptural and it is a gift that is encouraging. I deeply encourage you to pay attention to your dreams. God in the midst of our blue Christmas. Last point I have is thank you for having the uh, strength in which to gather together for your own and for the, the ability to know we're not alone. To such a deep importance of this life. So as we move into the lighting of an Advent wreath, this wonderful transition to remember Christ with us in the midst of our darkness, I ask now for your hearts to be opened, your dreams to be rekindled as a gift from God, and I give thanks that we are gathered tonight. So Jan's going to help me now. Let's light the Advent wreath for this blue Christmas Monday. The first candle we light is to remember those we have loved and lost. We pause to remember them. We remember their name, their face, their voice, memories that bind them to us in this season. May God's eternal love surround them. This second candle we light is to redeem the pain of loss, the loss of everything from jobs to relationship to the loss of our health or a loved one's health. We pause to gather up the pain of the past and offer it to God, asking that from God's hands we receive this gift of peace. Refresh, restore, renew us, O oh God, and lead us into your future. The third candle we light is remember ourselves this Christmas time. And we pause. And remember these past weeks and months of this pandemic year disbelief, anger, down times poignancy of reminiscing, the remembrance of hugs and handshakes of family and friends and loved ones, all those who stood with us. So we give thanks for the support we have known. Let us remember that dawn defeats darkness. The fourth candle is lit to remember our faith and the gift of hope which the Christmas story does offer to us. We don't rush it. We don't use it to placate our emotions. We don't use it to overwhelm. We just remember that God shares our life and promises us a place of, and a time of no more pain and suffering. So let us remember the one who shows the way, who brings the truth, and who bears the light. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Let us sing together, Lo, how a rose air blooming.
time for the prayers of we the gathered and the response when I say God hear our prayer your response please is and in your mercy answer that statement is a beautiful statement of faith and in your mercy answer in the spirit of this season, let us now confidently ask God for all the things we need for ourselves. We need, as we participate in whatever way we can this Christmas, God, hear our prayer. And in your mercy, answer. For our families and friends, that they may continue to help and support us. God, hear our prayer. And in your mercy, answer. For the person we have loved who has died, for all the losses that we know, that all may be redeemed by your Easter promise of resurrected life. God, hear our prayer. And in your mercy, answer. For all our family and friends, that they may know love and peace and happiness in you. God, hear our prayer. And in your mercy, answer for the peace proclaimed by the Christmas angels to come throughout the whole world. God, hear our prayer. And in your mercy, answer. God of great compassion and love, listen to the prayers of these, your people. Grant to all, especially the bereaved and troubled ones this Christmas night, this blue Christmas night, the longest night, Lord. This blessing we ask in the name of Christ who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before I speak the words of a benediction, we sing our closing hymn. I don't know if you've noticed, but Pastor Judith likes silence. And uh, I think it would be fitting before I speak words, is let's take uh, several minutes to just reflect upon this night. Would you please... Close your eyes as you are comfortable and let us take this time into the precious Lord's hands. Thank you, Lord, for your presence amongst us. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. In the 14th chapter of John, Jesus said, The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I've said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. May we go in peace and love and comfort in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us sing.
name, so I'm, oh, I was going to ask that we sing that refrain one more time. Is it easy to go back or is that too hard? Yeah. Can we sing that refrain one more time, James? Love, love, love is the gift. Love, love, love is the gift of Christmas love. Love, praise to God on You're welcome to stay as long as you wish. Well, I mean, not two or three hours, but, you know, as long as you wish. Um, I just ask that the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.